Hello, this is Aria, and today I want to show you how I made this dancing smoke character. And if you like my work, please subscribe to my channel, and as well, you can check out my Patreon page, where you can download some of my finished scenes, as well as support what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing I just want to point out is, um, normally I use Blender 2.83, but I was getting better results in Blender 2.9, so if you just go to the link in the description here, you can download the 2.9 beta version of Blender, and I was just getting a lot better results with this version, so feel free to use version 2.83, but if you want to get similar results to my simulation, then just quickly download this for free and follow along. Okay, so we need to get some kind of uh, base mesh, so I use the Make Human app here uh, to get that. You don't need to do this, but I just like using it just to get a nice default setup for Mixamo, but you can also just go directly to Mixamo here and go to Characters. And if you just scroll down a bit here, you'll see this mannequin here. This will work uh, as well. I would suggest not using one with so much clothing, but if you do want to follow along with the Make Human app, just go to the link in the description here and you can pick your operating system and just click to download the zip file. Once you've installed and opened up the app, you'll see sort of this default setting here. You can see that I've already started to make some changes, but you can just go through all of these tabs here as well as the sub tabs on the right side here to make your changes just to get some kind of base mesh. But again, because we're doing a smoke simulation, this is not going to matter a whole lot. So feel free to just leave it as the default settings as well. So once you've got that tweaked, we can just go over to the Pose and Animate tab here. And we want to make sure that this is set to None since we're going to get our rig from Mixamo. Click Pose here on the left and we'll go to the right here. And we just want to select T-Pose because this will work best with Mixamo. Then just click back to Files here and feel free to save your project if you want to work on this again. If not, you can just go to Export here. And make sure to select FBX. I know that both of these will work with Mixamo, but I have had issues with this in the past, so I prefer to use FBX. Then you can click these little dots here, find somewhere to save it onto your computer, give your mesh a name, and click Save. Okay, and then the final thing we want to do is just come over here to the top right and click the Export button. Awesome, so now we can head over to Mixamo.com. Just make sure that if you don't have an account to just uh, sign up for a free account. And once you're ready, you can just click on Upload Character here. Click this here, and then you just want to find where you saved your FBX and click Open. Just give this a second to load. And if everything worked correctly, you should see your model in its heapos here. We can click Next. You can see now that we need to place these markers, so let's grab the chin here. Next, we can grab the wrist, and this is the left wrist, so we're going to come all the way across here to the left side. Next, we'll do the elbows here, the knees, and finally, we can just stick the groin somewhere in this area here. Once you've got all those placed, you can just leave everything else the same and click Next. And then this should just take about 30 seconds to a minute to auto-rig. If everything worked correctly, you should have a default set up here, so we can click Next. Okay, so next we want to go to animations here, and you can see that I've already got one on mine here, but if you just click search here and type in hip hop, now you can just scroll down, and sometimes these can be a little bit hard to find, but I believe this is the one I used here, so just click on that there, and it will load up your animation. Feel free to set this up any way you like. I slowed mine down uh, a little bit just to get a smoother smoke simulation. Everything else we can leave the same. Okay, so once you're happy with your animation, you can just click download here. Let's leave the format to FBX. Let's change the frames per second to 24. And we can leave the rest the same and click download. Great, so now we can finally go into Blender here and open up a new scene. Let's just delete the camera, just so it's out of our way for now. We're going to use our default queue for our domain here, but let's just import our character first. So let's go to File, Import, FBX. Now you can just find your FBX here, just make sure the scale is set to 1, and click Import. Great, so now we can hit the decimal key on our numpad just to orbit around our character here. I'm just going to quickly set my end frame to 120 here for the tutorial, but feel free to leave that a little bit longer if you like. Awesome, so now we can set up our domain, so let's just click our default cube here, and we're just going to scale it, so hit S. Type in 1.5. Next, we can bring it up by hitting G, Z, and typing in 1.5. 
Finally, we want to scale it just a bit wider here, so we're going to hit S to scale. Next, we'll hold Shift and hit Z to lock it to the X and Y axis, and we're going to type in 1.2, and then click. Before we do anything else, what we want to do is save our file. I've been having a bit of issues with my simulation, so I find it best to save before you start doing your simulation. Okay, so just make sure that you save your file. Next, we can click Fluid. Let's change the type to Domain. And this is going to be a super easy setup today, and it's not going to be too heavy for most computers. So let's change the divisions here to 128. Don't let this scare you too much. I know that this seems high, but because we're using the adaptive domain as well as the dissolve, it's not going to have too much to calculate. You could even set this higher. I think my final was around 200 or 256, so feel free to push that a bit if you've got a more powerful computer, but for this tutorial, I'll just leave it at 128. Okay, and then we can skip our time steps for this one. Let's just scroll down a bit further here and let's turn on adaptive domain and then we'll click dissolve here. Let's open up the settings and we're going to change this to 10. Basically what this will do is it will just dissolve our smoke over time so it won't go too far away from our mesh. And then the final thing is let's just add some noise here. You can leave this to 2. Awesome. So let's click our character here and we're going to make this our flow object. So click fluid. Let's change the type to flow. We want to make sure that we change the behavior to inflow so that we've got a continuous flow of smoke as opposed to just one burst of smoke. Since we don't want our smoke to rise, we kind of want it to fall. Let's change this to minus one. Let's open up the flow source here. Let's change the surface emission to one as well. Finally, we'll just change our velocity here. So let's turn that on. Change the source to 0.5 and change the Z to 0.25. Awesome, so just a couple things to do before we start our simulation here is we can hit Shift A to add in a cube. We can turn this into our ground plane, so hit S to scale, Z to lock to the Z axis, we're gonna type in 0.05, and then hit Enter or click. We can hit G and Z to move our object, and we'll just hold Shift and just bring our mouse down just till it's just under the feet here and then click. Then we want to scale it up, so we'll hit S to scale. Let's hold shift and hit Z to lock it to the X and Y axis, and we can type in 3. And then we want to make sure that our ground interacts with our smoke, so we can go over here to fluid, and change the type to effector. You can just leave this as default. Alright, and then the very final thing we want to do is just add one force. So let's hit shift A, and you can go all the way down to force field here, and we're going to click turbulence. And then over here in the physics properties, let's keep the strength at 1, set the size to 1, and we'll set the flow to 0.25. So we're now ready to start our simulation, so just click on the domain one more time. Scroll all the way down to the bottom here. We want to make sure that our start and end frame are matching the animation length. Let's set the type to all, or final if you're using 2.83. Okay, and then once this bake is done in a few minutes, we'll add our shader. Okay, so that only took a couple minutes here. So now that we've got that, we can just hide our character here. But first, let's just go up here and add our render toggle. We can just hide all of these here. Okay, so now that that's done, we can start adding our lighting here. So let's just go over here to the right to the world properties. Click on this dot here. We can go to environment texture. Click open. This is the HDRI that I'm using here, so follow the link in the description if you want to use this exact one, or feel free to use whatever one works for your scene, and then click open. So now we can jump over into the shading tab here. Hit the decimal key on your numpad, or just zoom in here just so we can see better. Then we can just go up to the right here and click our render preview. It looks a bit scary because we see nothing, so let's just add a shader, so click new. Select this principal BSDF and hit delete. Shift A. You can go down to shader here and then we can find the principal volume shader here. And we want to make sure that we hook volume to volume instead of the surface. Let's just set the density to 8 and you can see that we're starting to see something back here. But what we need to do is add in a better light. So we can just grab our default light here. Let's hit GY just to bring it over and GZ just to bring it down. Our position is not really going to matter, it's just so that we can see where it is, but let's go over to the right hand here, click on the light properties, and we want to change this from point over to sun. Position doesn't matter, but our rotation does, so let's hit R to rotate, Y to lock to the Y axis, and we can just drag our mouse 
click, then we'll just hit R and Z to just give it a bit of an angle. Finally, let's just click color here and we can just give it a slight blue tone and that should work great. Okay, and you can see that our smoke is showing up now, but it's not looking that great. So let's click on our domain here. A couple things we want to do. First of all, I used cycles to render. So if you want to follow along, just switch over to cycles here. Let's change this to GPU. And then there's just a couple things I like to do. So let's turn on adaptive sampling here. And we can open up our volumes. And what we want to do here is change this to something higher. Otherwise, when you render it, it's going to take a lot of time. So let's set this to something like three. And again, you won't see anything change here. This is just more for when we render. Okay, and then we can just add a few more notes here just to give it a slightly nicer look. First, let's just click the ground here and it's going to give it a material. So let's go to the materials properties, click new. We can set the metallic to one and we'll just bring the roughness down here. Let's also set the base color to something a lot darker. So click back on our domain here. We can hit shift A to add a new node. We can go to input here and go all the way up to attribute. Click and we're just going to type in a name here to make sure it's exactly what you see here. So D E N S I T Y density. And again, make sure it's spelled exactly like this or else it will not work properly. Shift A again. We can click search and type in math. Shift D to duplicate. Now let's hook the factor into the top value here. Let's change this to one. We're going to change the type to power and then we'll hook the value into the value again change this value to 3 and we want to change this to multiply. Then we can just grab our value output here and connect it to our color. Now you can see that we've got a little bit more definition to our smoke character now. So we want to do this one more time so let's just select these two here. Hold shift hit D to duplicate. Then we can connect the factor to the base. Set the exponent to 3. We can set this value to 5. And finally we'll hook the value here into the emission strength. Awesome, so that's looking great and feel free to tweak these up and down if you want a slightly different look, but that's pretty much all I did for the shader. Okay, so now we can go back to the layout here. And then the final thing I did was just finish the scene, so let's hit Shift A to add a new mesh. Click Cylinder, then we can just hit S to scale. Click, then we can hit S again. Hold Shift Z to lock to the X and Y axis, we can just drag this a little bit wider. Click. Then we can hit tab to go into edit mode or we can click here on the top left. Hit 3 on your numpad or click up here to go into face select mode. Click away. And then we just want to go to the side here. Let's turn on x-ray here just so we can see through. And we just want to click and drag through the middle just until we've got some of these faces selected on the edge. We can hit delete and click faces. Alright and in this scene we're going to leave the top face on here. But we'll add a couple more edge loops here just to support our geometry. So hold control and click R. And you can see it brings up this guide here. So we're just going to click and drag. Then one more time, control R, click and drag. Let's hold Alt and we can select this loop here. Shift and Alt to select the rest of the loop. And then we'll hit I to inset our faces. Click, hit I again. Click and one more time, I and click. Okay. Let's do that to the top too. So Alt click this edge here. Shift Alt click this edge here. I to inset. Click I to inset. And one more time. Awesome. So now you can hit tab to go back into object mode. Let's turn off x-ray mode. We can right click and shade smooth. And then finally let's just go over to the modifiers properties here. Click here and subdivision surface. And set both of these to 2. Okay, so now we can hit G to move and Z to lock to the axis and bring this up. Then just before we add a material, let's just add a camera. So shift A, click camera, and then you just want to set yourself up just in front of the simulation here. You can hold control, alt, and hit zero on your numpad to lock the camera to your view. And then we'll just click over here on the little camera icon on the right, change this to 35. And then feel free to add some depth of field if you want. This will increase your render times, but it will make it look a little bit nicer as well. So let's go back into our render preview here. Give this a sec to load, and now we can make sure we've got our cylinder selected. Let's go to the materials properties here. Click new. Now we can bring our base value all the way down, and we're also going to bring our specular down to zero as well. Okay, so now if we turn off our overlays here, you can see that we've basically got our final image. I believe the only other thing I did was add 
a couple lights so you can just do the same setup as I normally do shift a go to light and click area G Z to bring it up G shift Z to lock it to the X and Y click and then we can hit R to rotate and X to lock it to the X axis bring it to about 45 then we're going to hit R to rotate, Z to lock it to the Z, and rotate one more time. Okay, you can set the color to an orange color here. Change the power to 250. Scale it up a little bit by hitting S and dragging your mouse. And then finally, Shift D to duplicate, X to lock it to the X axis. Let's bring our second light over here. Hit R and then Z, and then just drag this till it's facing our character. Awesome, so now you can hit 0 on your numpad to go back into camera view here. Let's click on our render preview one more time. Now we can select both our lights here and just move them around as you see fit. Then finally turn off your overlays to see your final image. Okay, and then you can crank the power as well. And then just change the color to something a bit more noticeable as well. And then just make sure that they're not doing what my lights are doing here. So GX, let's just bring this back in here and this one as well. All right, that should work good. So hit zero and render preview. Awesome, so now you can see that they're looking a lot better. All right, so last time we'll just turn off our overlays here and you can see that this is our final image. You'll notice in mine that I didn't have these glowing edges here. That's just because I basically composited these out later in post, but feel free to leave them. They do kind of give a sense of depth. All right, so that's everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Just make sure that when you do render here, go to the volumes here. And like I said, set this to something higher than one. You can also set this to 512. And then just go to the performance here. I like to set these to 256. I always add motion blur to mine, but this will add uh, a bit of render time to your animation, so keep that in mind. Just make sure that if you do have a GPU, you can go up to preferences here and go to system and make sure that you've got optics selected here. I found this to render my animations by far the fastest. Even though I have a thread ripper, I find that this just is way faster, so make sure that you've got that selected. Okay, and then before we render here, we can go to the compositing tab here. Let's click use nodes. Now we want to denoise our final image, so we can just go over here to the layer properties here. Make sure our denoising data is selected, and you'll see that it brings up a couple of other outputs here. So hit shift A, search, and we can click denoise. Now you can hook up the noisy image to the image, denoising denormal to the normal, and denoising albedo to the albedo. Now we just want to replace our image with the denoised image here. We can go back to rendering here and we'll click render and render image. Okay, and then there you have it. Like I said, if you want to get um, a bit higher resolution, I always render my images in 4K, so you can change this here to 200. Keep in mind that this will increase your render times by quite a bit, probably three or four times. So you can even set this to 150. Or your other option is to just make sure that when you are baking your simulation, you just have this set to something that's a lot higher, say about 200. Okay, so that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed this. And if you enjoy my work, again, please subscribe and check out my Patreon channel. If you can find your way to supporting me, that would be amazing so I can continue doing these animations and let me know what you want to see in the future. Alright, see you soon. Bye!